morning everybody. Welcome to Vlogtober Day 2. Today what we're going to be doing is something that I had done quite a few times last year and that is talk about some of my favorite horror slash Halloween movies. Now the movies we are going to be talking about today do not have anything to do with Halloween necessarily but they are three of my favorite art house movies from the last 10 years. Now when I say art house what I'd like to do here is just give you the definition of art house and then that way we have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Maybe some people wouldn't consider the movies I'm going to put on this list art house horror. So let's just figure out what an art house movie is real quick. Wonderful Cinema defines art house as this. Art house is a film genre which encompasses films where the content and style, often artistic or experimental, adhere with as little compromise as possible to the filmmaker's personal artistic vision. The narrative is often in social realism style with a focus on the character's contemplation of their existence or immediate concerns. I actually think that defines what I'm gonna be talking about really well today. Day. Now that we know what art house is, let's spin that into art house horror. Often art house horror is low budget and very artistic and very stylized. Because of that, it's one of my favorite things. Today what I wanted to do was talk about three art house horror movies that I love from the last 10 years. And it bears mentioning, if you are a hardcore horror fan, you probably know about these movies already. The three movies I'm gonna bring up are not necessarily big secrets. So the first movie I wanna talk about today is Seder. Now if Seder sounds familiar to you, it's because book of Brett and I have a podcast. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this movie in a bit more of a long format, I will link that down in the description as well as put it up here right now. Seder is essentially a horror movie about a mental illness. And the director, Jordan Graham, basically did everything himself. He built the cabin that this movie is filmed in. He filmed most of it himself. He color graded it. He did all the sound effects. And it took him almost six years to create this movie. It's based around his grandmother. It's phenomenal. Some of it is very surreal and, and very strange, but I cannot recommend this movie enough. These little recommendation videos are really not reviews. They're really more me just telling you about the movie and trying to see if it, it piques your interest or not, and maybe introducing you to something you've never heard of. And I know a lot of people have not heard of Seder. This movie gets some flack because it is a little bit slow in the beginning, but if you stick to it, I promise it is a fun, weird, crazy art house movie that makes for a great time. And during Halloween, you put this on at night, you're gonna have a lot of fun. So the next movie I want to talk about is a movie from 2016. This is about as art house as you get. This is in black and white. It's very reminiscent of the 60s. A girl moves in to be the caretaker of this home. And as she's there, she starts to get all these weird feelings as she runs into people she knows from her past and horror ensues, I guess is the best way to put it. This movie is directed by Mickey Keating. Darling is one of my favorite horror movies in the last 10 years, easily, regardless of genre. The lighting is amazing. The cinematography is phenomenal. The story is good. I love the ending, and it's just everything that I appreciate about dark, weird, awesome horror is in this movie. I loved it so much, probably in my top 10 of modern horror right now because it pays homage to some of the 60s horror that I absolutely love. And you can tell the director really had a love for that as well. And if you can see past it being in black and white and past the sort of pretentiousness of it being in black and white, there's a really, really awesome horror movie within it. It is a phenomenal movie and I can't recommend it enough. So number two, Darling. Now that brings us to number three. This movie is probably the most well-known film on this list. And I know it's only three movies and, and I will do more throughout this month, but I'm trying to keep these videos very short. So I'm trying to do this quickly. So my number three is gonna be Mandy from 2018. Now, if you've heard of this movie, you'll know Nicolas Cage is in this. And Nicolas Cage has had a weird, crazy career. And he's gone from being in movies like Face Off to being in movies like Mandy, like smaller budget art house movies. I don't know if that's because Hollywood kind of gave up on him and sort of quit casting him, but he proves in this movie that man, does he still have it. This is a revenge film where his girlfriend gets taken away from him and he basically has to go find her and get back at the people that took her. Within that really generic sounding story is one of the most beautifully well shot art house horror movies I have ever seen. The second half of this gets into weird, weird territory and it stops being realistic and starts being really, really crazy and almost video game-like. But that's kind of butted up against the first half of it that is very artistic. The cinematography does a really good job of really bonding you with these two characters at the first half of it. And when the main thing that happens in this movie happens, 
it really switches to this crazy non-reality filled world and it does it in a way that works within the story that it's telling and within the film language that it's using from one half to the other. The first half is shot really beautifully and very artistically. The second half is shot very violently, but it works because of the story that they're telling and the way the main character's reaction to that thing that's happening to him, it's believable. And that I think is what I love the most about this movie. It's crazy and artistic and beautiful, but it's also crazy and weird and violent and nuts. And if you haven't seen Mandy, I really think that you should. This was on my list for a couple years before I actually got around to watching it. And by the time I did actually get around to watching it, um, I was mad at myself that I had waited so long to see this because this movie is exactly my type of movie. And I know it got a lot of publicity when it came out because Nicolas Cage is in it and people are very, very fascinated by Nicolas Cage. It's more than a weird Nicolas Cage meme movie. I know this is very weird and different from all the other videos that I've been doing recently, but it's October. It's Vlogtober. The whole point of Vlogtober is to make one video every single day. This video today is what I wanted to make today, and that is the most important part of this channel. Sometimes I'm going to wake up and want to talk to you guys about horror movies. Sometimes I'm going to wake up and want to take you guys with me to Disney World. And that's the beauty of this channel, that I get to kind of just make whatever I want. So if you like this, make sure you hit the like button. If you really liked it, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I got a lot more content coming in October. Not only movie content like this, but also vlogs where I go to weird, fun, haunted houses and theme parks and whatever else. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow with another episode of Vlogtober. I got a good one planned for tomorrow. So I'll see you then. See ya.